Ciao! In this video, we're gonna study what a spectrum analyzer really is and how to use it inside Isotope Inside 2. A spectrum analyzer is a meter that measures amplitude across the frequency which encompasses the spectrum of human hearing. Generally, the vertical axis represents the amplitude, whereas the horizontal axis represents the frequency. So we have a visual representation of how a specific frequency sounds, but across the entire spectrum. Through the spectrum analyzer in Isotope Insight 2, we have a very detailed readout. The only thing we have to do is to position our mouse anywhere in the spectrum analyzer, and this will display a readout of the frequency and the amplitude of that exact location. Zooming in and zooming out within the spectrum module of Insight 2 has never been that easy. The only thing you have to do is either position your mouth on the decibel scale or on the frequency scale, and by using the mouse wheel you can freely zoom in and zoom out. If you wish instead to return to the default view, you only have to double click on either scale. Now, within the spectrum analyzer, the options are key in order for you to customize properly the view. If we go again in the option icon and click with your mouse, the option window will appear from where you can choose the right customization for your spectrum analyzer. Under the option spectrum type, you can select four different types of spectrum. The first one and the default one is linear. Linear display a continuous line connecting the calculated point of the spectrum. The third of the octave instead splits the spectrum into bars within the width of one third of an octave. So although the spectrum splits into discrete bands, this option provides a very good resolution, especially if we need to focus on low frequencies. The full octave instead splits the spectrum into bars with the width of one full octave. Critical band splits the spectrum into bands that correspond on how we hear. Each band represents sounds that are considered similar in frequency. The average time of the spectrum is averaged according to the settings. In other words, higher average times can be very useful for viewing an overall tonal balance of a mix, while shorter average times provide a little bit more details in real-time display. Now, down here you see the peak hold, which is generally defaulted off. By turning the peak hold display on, now we can mess a little bit more with the peak hold time right above it. This will let us select specific times that we're going to retain the maximum peak hanging above our spectrum. This is very useful, especially if we need to have a visual representation of exactly what is going on within our spectrum. The Windows options, over here we have Windows Types and Windows, will let you control pretty much how you will display the spectrum. The window size controls the trade-off between the frequency and the time resolution within the spectrum, whether the window option lets you pretty much have different amplitude and frequency resolutions based on the windows you choose. The overlap, which generally is left to 50%, controls how often the spectrum updates. The higher the number, the more the spectrum will update frequently. The problem is that there's going to be a trade-off as you will increase the CPU usage, so be very mindful when using this option. And this will conclude our tutorial. So remember, use the spectrum analyzer every time you want to have a clear reading upon how loud each frequency plays across the spectrum. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Ciao!